video, we're gonna be talking about what's in my camera bag 2024 because I'm about to pack my camera bag for five weeks of traveling and shooting in Bali. But first, we gotta unbox my new camera bag. So not only did a lot of the things in my camera bag change in 2024, but the bag itself. I used to shoot on the PGY Tech One Mo 25 liter backpack, but now I've upgraded to the One Mo 2 25 liter backpack. So let's rip this open and check this out. Cause I'm very excited to try out version two because I was very happy with version one. Oof, it's got that same nice sleek black with little red accents. As well with the One Mode 2, you have some new pockets. For example, now you have this side pocket right here where you can easily put in maybe some extra batteries or your phone if you need to get quick access to that, which is nice so you don't have to always open up the main area of your backpack. As well inside, there's a whole bunch of space and custom dividers so you can make it exactly the way you have it. The One Mode 2 actually comes with its own cube. I prefer not to use the kind of cube because I want quick access to everything, but for some people that might be really great where, for example, maybe you have your drone equipment all in the cube, and then when you wanna film with your drone, you pull out the cube just rather than taking everything out of your camera bag. Another thing I love is that if you're running out of space, you can unzip the front and you're gonna get a whole bunch of extra space in the front here and as well there's one of those quick access places that you can throw stuff in here there's a bunch of inner mesh pockets different areas where you can put extra camera gear for example if you just don't want to open up the main bag you can just put it all here in the front so yeah i'm really excited to pack up the one mode 2 with everything for this trip because this is a good looking camera bag and it's very functional for my purposes. When it comes to gear, whenever I'm on a trip, I always make the mistake of taking way too much stuff with me. 99% of the time, I don't use half the gear that I take with you. And because this time I'm doing a five week trip to Southeast Asia in Singapore and Bali, I wanna make sure that I'm not dragging too much along. So this is gonna be like my minimalist content creator setup for when you're traveling or at least attempt to, I probably am gonna fail in the end because it's just so hard to choose which camera to take and not take. One second, let me grab a chair quickly because leaning over like this, it's gonna get tiring if we're talking about a whole bunch of different gear. So, one second. Much better. Zoom in a little bit. Okay, so first things first, cameras. Of course, the main camera that we're taking on the trip is the A7S III. This is my main go-to workhorse camera for shooting both photos and for video. I love vlogging with the A7S III, I love filming B-roll. You have the flip LCD screen, you have reliable autofocus, you can film 4K at 60 frames per second. Everything that you would need in a camera, you're gonna get in the A7S III. So that's why I'm gonna be taking only this camera for my vlogging and filming video. Paired with the A7S III, I'm gonna be bringing along the Sony 1635G Master lens, which is right now on my tripod camera. And as well, I'm gonna bring the 7200. Now I know, I know in the past, I've always said bring along prime lenses and how much I love prime lenses for their nice shallow depth of field. But sometimes it's just not practical to bring a whole bunch of different prime lenses and be switching around. So I'm gonna to try to cover all my focal length bases with the 1635 for my wide and to be able to zoom in a little bit closer at 35 for B-roll. And then if I wanna really capture and just have coverage, I'm gonna bring the 7200. So I'll have 1635 and then 70 to 200. There's a little bit of gap there at the 50 mil mark, but that's okay. I, I tend to be most of the time just shooting really wide. And then in some situations, if I really wanna capture a certain detail or whatever I'm trying to shoot is just really far away, then the 7200 is gonna come in handy. There's mountains and cool things in Bali, so I need to be able to zoom in and capture that, and also I need to have those wide angle shots if I'm you know, shooting at a really epic waterfall or something like that. So I know from lens choice, it's not too sexy this time. We're going for practical because I'm traveling and I wanna be able to just cover my bases. Paired with my lenses, I'm gonna be bringing the variable ND filter from Polar Pro. This is the Peter McKinnon Mist Edition. 2, which I really like. Kind of makes the softer highlights and just gives that halation look to your footage. So I'll be bringing this so I can control my exposure and be able to follow that 180 rule, especially when you're in a really bright country like Bali where there's just an abundance of light. 
This is gonna come in very handy. ND filters here in Finland in the middle of winter, not so necessary because it's just so dark and you can <laughs> never adjust with ND filter. But in a sunny place like Bali, this will come in very handy when it comes to controlling my exposure. So variable ND filter, Mist Edition, version two from Polar Pro will be put on the 1635 and the 7200 lens. Next is my everyday camera, the Fujifilm X100V. I know just recently they announced the X100 six is it i don't know whatever the next model and i hope to get my hands on it eventually but for now we are going to bring this guy and this camera is just for fun i would want to be able to just take photos memories of my family while we're traveling and enjoying because i don't always want to be dragging along the a7s3 with a bigger lens so this is just a nice little camera that i can just hang from my wrist like this or i'll bring a camera strap and i can just hang around my neck snap a few photos here and there take some cool looking photos or memories with the Fujifilm X100V. It doesn't take a lot of space, so it's really easy to just throw into the camera bag. Next, we got the Sony ECM B1M shotgun mic. I'm gonna be bringing this along for vlogging. And the reason why I really like this microphone is that the moment you put it into the hot shoe of your Sony camera, the camera is gonna be uh, providing power for your microphone, meaning you'll never run out of battery because there's nothing worse when you start filming a long talking headshot and you all of a sudden realize that your shotgun mic has run out of battery. So I really like this and as well, there's no cords so you don't have anything dangling or getting in the way. So this is just very minimalist microphone setup with the ECM B1M. Also great audio quality for such a small size shotgun mic. So that's what I'm gonna be bringing along on this trip. When it comes to drones, we're bringing along the trusty DJI Mini 4 Pro. It's crazy because I have all the other drones, the DJI Mavic Classic, the Air 2S, I have FPV drones. But the drone that I'm using and bringing along all the time is my Mini 4 Pro. And there's a few reasons for that. The first reason is it's just so small, lightweight, compact. You're not gonna get into trouble with the laws when it comes to weight restrictions. The second is that it's actually just very easy to fly and use and especially when you're in situations where you don't wanna be getting a lot of tension. So because it's so small and quiet, it's just easy to throw up in the air, get the footage that you need. And lastly, I love the fact that it films either in horizontal if you're creating long form videos, but you can as well turn the camera gimbal vertical and get that nice epic footage for short form content on Instagram or for shorts. So that's why I love using the DJI Mini 4 Pro. I don't have the uh, controller with the screen, which is a little bit of a bummer. Hopefully DJI would send me one of those in the near future. I had them for the DJI Mini 3 Pro, but unfortunately you can't use the same screen for the Mini 4 Pro, which is a little bit of a bummer. So I have this controller and then I'll be bringing along four, five batteries. I love this charger. You throw in three, put them to charge all night long, it serves as your batteries for your drone, but as well you can use this as a battery pack if you need to charge your phone or something like that. So I'll have that along on the trip. Lastly for the drone, I'll be bringing this Freewheel DJI Mini 4 Pro filter set. You have all sorts of different ND filters and polarizers and all that good stuff when you wanna be able to control your exposure or get a reflections, which is really important if you're you know, filming somewhere with the beach, ocean, water, a lot of reflection, but if you're using a polarizer, you'll get rid of that. So. I'll link that below as well. Next, something new in the bag. This was provided by PGY Tech, which is the sponsor of this episode. This is the PGY Tech Mantis Pod. And I'm really excited about this because I've been using the Joby Gorilla Pod for a while and the Joby legs are getting a little bit floppy and loose. It's a little bit sketchy to be honest at the time. Whereas with this one, it's super solid for when you're vlogging, then you can open it up and have a three-legged tripod leg, which is great if you wanna be able to do, you know, just a little talking head shot without any movement. You can easily just set this up. And then there's another third option where you can actually make it come farther away from you so you can get even more of your environment. So really cool what you can do with this Mantis Pod. So I'm very interested to bring this on the trip to see how it helps me with vlogging and content creation. The next piece of gear we're gonna talk about is actually a huge upgrade in my camera bag and that is the PGY Tech CF Express Create Make card reader case. Now, in order for you to understand why I'm so excited about this guy, you gotta understand where I'm coming from. This, in the past, has been my memory card storage system. This is literally an Iceland Air headphone case, and for some reason, one time I just jacked it from the plane, and I thought, hey, this would be a really nice thing to, you know, 
hold all my different memory cards because it has a zipper and I wouldn't lose them. But if you look closely, it's definitely unorganized and impractical. I just have a whole bunch of SD cards, micro SD cards, CF Express cards in this Iceland Air headphone case. And then on top of that, I have to always bring along on trips my Sony CF Express card reader and as well this other dongle for micro SD and SD cards. Bringing all these different card readers and dongles and storage cases is just not practical when I'm traveling. This guy is A, really epic looking. I love this moss forest color that I chose. It is, feels just really good in the hand. You can just hold it like this. It's got this like nice grip. Uh, it's gonna be sturdy and protect your memory cards. So if you ever drop this, it's okay. Your memory cards aren't gonna break. In order to open this up, you just push from the back here and voila, this is the card reader case. So in here, you have three slots for CF Express cards, which I'm shooting with for my Sony a7S III. Then on the other side, you have two slots for SD cards, four slots for micro SD cards, and then two slots for nano SIM cards, which is actually really handy because when you're traveling and you're switching out SIM cards, there's nothing worse than losing your home base SIM card and then you gotta come home and you don't have access to your data plan, all that stuff. And as well here, we have the eject pins. So we all know when that time comes that you need to eject your SIM card slot holder in your iPhone, no one ever has anything. You're trying to fumble around trying to find something but it's gonna be built in here always with you whenever you're traveling. Then on top of just being a card case storage holder, you also have this little eject button here. So you're gonna press that button here and it's gonna eject the USB-C cord that you can then attach to your laptop. And then in here, you can either put the CF Express card or your SD card. They also provide a micro SD adapter card thing so you can put your micro SD into this SD card and then you can put it into the SD card slot and then read your footage. The CrateMate reader case as well has a reading and writing speed of 1000 megabytes per second when you're using the CF Express card reader and then if you're using SD or micro SD it's gonna be 312 megabytes per second which is more than fast enough for you to be able to transfer footage or to even be able to edit from. I think at least, don't quote me on that. I'm not always an expert, but it sounds very fast. So this, this guy is replacing all of these three things that I used to have in my camera bag. And not only is it replacing all of them, it's also guaranteeing that I have just a solid, durable, sturdy support system for it all. So I'm really excited about this. And I just wanna say thank you to PGY Tech for sending me this and for sponsoring this episode and supporting this channel. I love this piece of gear that you guys have recently created, so thank you so much for creating great products for creators. If you're interested in this, I'll make sure to link it below for you guys to grab and enjoy for your guys' future trips. So 2024, we got something new for the memory card and reading system, but as well, we got something new for the battery storage system. This is the Tri-Charger from my good friend Peter Lindgren, which he released last fall, and this guy is a game changer. This Tri-Charger essentially allows you to put three Sony batteries at a time. There's different versions for Canon and Nikon, I believe but you can put in three of their Sony batteries in at one time, put it to charge, and voila, it's gonna be charging simultaneously all three batteries at the same time. And what I love about that is, we all know the pain of being on a trip, you come home from a late night of shooting, and then you gotta recharge your batteries for the next day. And it's honestly such a pain in the butt to have to wake up like periodically every few hours to change your battery in the battery charger. With this, you just put in all three batteries, put it to charge, and voila, in the morning, it's gonna be ready to go. And then on top of that, for example, if I run out of uh, slots for memory cards in the CrateMate reader case, then as well in the TriCharger, I as well have three slots for CF Express, three slots for SD cards, and then two slots for micro SDs. So I'm not gonna be running out of storage system for memory cards in the future and I definitely am not going to be using the Iceland Air headphone case anymore that I use for multiple years. I don't know what I was thinking, but hey, this is my past, and now this 
is my future. Now, last but not least is the Insta360 X3. I guess there was still one more camera bag, but this is in a different category. And the reason why I want to bring the Insta360 X3 on the trip is for behind the scenes footage. My idea and plan is to take their pole, attach the X3 like this, then attach the tripod legs, this way, whenever I'm out shooting, I can just plop this down wherever I'm at, turn it on to record, and then in post, I can decide what I want to track, whether it be the subject or me filming. I can choose in post then whether I want horizontal footage for my long form videos or vertical footage if I'm making short form content. So I really think the X3 is gonna be the most versatile BTS camera, even if there is other cameras like the DJI Osmo Action 4 or the GoPro Hero 12 that give great quality, but the fact that I have to always choose in which direction I'm filming and whether I want horizontal or vertical, it's just not gonna work for me. So that's why I wanna use the Insta360 X3. As well, I'm gonna bring just a chest mount where I can touch the two if I want some nice POV shots. So it's gonna be a mixture of POV shots from the chest and then stationary, just having this set down on the ground somewhere where I'm shooting. So yeah, this is what's in my camera bag 2024 travel edition. It's gonna be five weeks of just amazing time in Bali shooting and as well enjoying. This is a little bit of a treat to myself and the family because at this point, we have most likely reached 100,000 subscribers. And if I'm honest, I wanna stop and celebrate because oftentimes whenever I reach a certain milestone, I just move on to the next thing. But this is a huge milestone in my YouTube content creation journey. So if you don't hear too much from me in the next few weeks, it's because I'm enjoying Bali. Once again, thank you PGY Tech for sponsoring this episode. I'll link below all the different products that's in my camera bag in 2024. So make sure you check it out and enjoy.